Dan Passarelli here. I'm glad to participate in this pretty important uh, group of presentations that all are centered around trading during a recession. So when we get into a recession, everybody feels like trading is very, very different. And it is in a lot of ways. And I want to share some ways that you can not just survive, but maybe even thrive, even in a very weak economic period. Before we get started, I need to point out that options are not for everyone, and you should read characteristics and risks of standardized options before trading. Okay, so these are gonna be my top tips for you on how to trade during a recession. The first thing that you need to know is that it's not like it was. There are many strategies that work really, really well when the market is super conducive and easy to trade, but they stop working when the market changes. One thing that I'm reasonably known for saying is that all strategies work until they don't. And that is so true. I've seen that in the 30 years that I've been in options trading, and it's, it's just a fact. But you know what else is a fact is that traders, I've seen traders go through, you know, decades of careers like me and like John, who's our head coach. And you know what? Good traders, the ones that are able to last, they change with the market conditions. One trick ponies just don't, don't work when it comes to trading. And here, let me show you what I mean. So this is a chart. Uh, these are monthly candles, and it's a chart of the SPY, so basically the S&P 500, or at least the S&P 500 ETF, from a period between January 1st of 2010 to January 1st of 2020, that 10-year period. So look at this. Do you notice a pattern here? Like, if you were going to trade this, how would you trade it? I mean, there's actually a couple of things to look at. I don't want j just to talk about these simple answers. Look, over this 10 year period, basically the market just went straight up. Now these are monthly candles. So we had a couple of down periods here, a little bit of a hiccup here, but the market basically went straight up. And what else do we notice is that implied volatility, for those of you who watch implied volatility, if you're an option trader, I sure hope you do. It can give you a lot of information, was overpriced. How do I know that? Because it was above historical volatility for almost the entirety of 10 years. How do we make money doing that? Selling puts, right? Uh, we'll revisit that in a second. But look at this. I just shifted this chart two years and eight months forward. And I started it on August 2nd, 2012 to August 2nd, 2022. And man, part of this chart looks a little bit different, doesn't it? I mean, we kind of still had that same period where it went straight up with a little hiccup here, but then here is where the market started heading into recession. Not necessarily, it didn't, the recession didn't start here, but there was some concern about economic weakness here, the recession actually started a fair amount later. And so look, anyone who was trading during this period, well, it, it changed a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I like to say during that first period that I showed you, uh, to January 1st, 2010 to January 1st, 2020, like a baby could have just made a killing in trading options. All, all anyone had to do was sell, was just sell puts month after month. You'd have a couple of losing months, but overall you'd kill it because those are positive Delta and negative Vega trades. And it just works. Uh, it makes the theta inflated and overpriced and you just make a killing. My dog could have made a killing trading options during that 10 year period. But now we need skills, baby skills. We can't just sit by and trade the same old strategies because they don't work anymore. The ones that work when volatility is overpriced, right to sell options and the market's going up, don't work so well when volatility is when volatility is very high and sometimes moves around a lot when the market's mostly heading down, but also moving around a lot. 
So we need different strategies. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And then one thing I know is that I have never met someone who learned how to trade options in a box, in a vacuum, right? I, I've never met anybody who just sat down and maybe read a book or, or didn't even read a book, just sat and, and just figured it out by staring at a bunch of flashing numbers. Nobody has ever done that ever, not once, ever. How do people succeed? with a coach or sometimes just in a community of people helping each other. Uh, our community, the Market Taker Mentoring community grew probably the most during the past few years because people have been seeking it out. There's been, there's been a great deal of interest in options. People had more time at home. And here's one way that we responded when people came to us seeking community. We created a community for everyone to join. And I believe it's the greatest online community of option traders there is. And if you go to markettaker.com, that's market as in stock market, taker as in take what's rightfully yours, two T's in a row, markettaker.com, and click over here to join free, you can right now for a limited period of time, get free access to our community, which includes our MTM community chat room, where you can be in a community of people who are going through the same struggles as you, or people who've gone through them and have overcome them and are now there to help you. And there's also a lot of free classes that are great, especially for people just starting out. So we invite you to come and join the community and all you have to do is make your way on over to our website. Now, what, what works during a recession? Well, you know, the one thing that doesn't work anymore is just, you know, closing your eyes, selling puts, and having money magically show up in your brokerage account. Like, that that doesn't work in these cases. We, we have to have those skills, right? Uh, volatility trades are one thing that works. For example, um, you know, when, when we were leading up into the recession of 2022, the whole first half of that year, I probably trade, traded more straddles in that first half of that year than I ever did in my life. Um, they just became more conducive when the market started moving around, especially towards the beginning of it, when you could buy them reasonably cheap. And then time spreads, taking advantage of disparate uh, term structure of volatility. Those were great, not just for earnings trades, but, but for other trades. You can get a really, really great, powerful edge trading time spreads in, in markets where they move around a little bit that are a little bit less predictable. There's a little bit more fear in those front expirations. Credit spreads and debit spreads. These are great for, um, you know, for, for taking advantage of when maybe a market might have moved a little bit too fast too far and we're looking for a pullback, bouncing off support or resistance. Debit spreads also maybe bouncing off support or resistance or maybe just looking for individual opportunities instead of just worrying about what the market in general is doing because there's always opportunities out there on individual stocks. We just have to find them. Now, getting back a little bit to the idea of just the market in general and trading in general, if it looks like a recession's coming, a lot of times you can see that in advance and it's good to try and get a little bit ahead of it. Some of the signs are when we see the yield curve inverting, right? That's a time-tested thing. Uh, months before the recession of 2022 happened, um, there were people talking about the yield curve inverting and saying, this is a sign that usually leads into a recession. And then there was a bunch of people who didn't want to see us go into recession who, you know, just said, oh, well, here's why it's not going to work that time. Here's why it's not going to work. Here's why it's different. It's different this time. How about that quote? So, no, it's, it's seldom different this time when it comes to the market. Uh, and the yield curve inversion ended up being a telltale sign. Shrinking GDP, the definition, or at least the historical definition of a recession is two quarters in a row of shrinking GDP. You see it shrink one quarter and the economy's not getting better, you might be heading into recession. How about if you pay attention to earnings, which I think are really important, when we see lower earnings estimates by the analyst, that's a big thing. And if you're gonna try and get ahead of it, Puts are cheapest at the top. 
And that is a quote that I love to say because they are. If you wait until the market has already crashed, the puts are much more expensive, not just because of delta, but because of implied volatility. You end up, you, you end up basically buying puts at the bottom, the absolute most expensive puts, and then when the market goes up, it's the double whammy. So, you know, nobody can predict the future. I cannot predict the future. Nobody can predict the future. But if you look, there might be some signs. And maybe if you scale slowly into some hedges or into just some bearish trading opportunities, it could be an advantage to you. Another thing is just don't give up. Uh, it's a, this quote, more millionaires are made in bear markets than bull markets. I'm not sure who said that one. I can't take credit for it because it's been out there. But, but it's true. Like anybody can eke out a little bit of money in a, in a bull market. I mean, it's, that's, that's not what's hard. Um, but in a bear market, there's just more opportunities. Bear markets and recessions, these are what I like to call option traders markets because we're not just sitting there twiddling our thumbs doing this one thing that everybody does and pretending we're smart. We're using the skills that we have and we're, we're capitalizing on them and we're taking control of our financial future. Traders must be resilient and in control, not letting emotion get in the way, fear or greed, just resilient in control, not of the market, you can't control that, but of your emotion. And then I'd like to close with this. It's just like it was actually, because all strategies work until they don't. And that's true really in all market conditions. Um, you know, if I'm trading one stock that has this opportunity, there's a different stock that has a different opportunity. And within that one stock, there's sometimes when their earnings do better and they're going up, and sometimes when their earnings are doing worse and they're going down. It doesn't really matter that we're in a recession at all. I mean, we do see some macro patterns that make a difference, but the actual tactics of trading remain the same. Good traders change with market conditions and market conditions on a micro level do change every day. So I hope that helps. This is Dan Passarelli. Trade smart.